Well, this section, it's a short section, but this section is all about using the ChatGPT web browsing feature, which as of a week ago was disabled by OpenAI. Allegedly, it's a temporary disable while they fix an issue. And the issue is that people were abusing the web browsing feature, which basically connects ChatGPT to Bing so it can search the web and crawl and do all sorts of interesting things. People were abusing it to get past uh, paywalls on websites. It was very easy to do because most paywalled websites actually just include the, let's say you're trying to go to the New York Times, the full article is in the HTML, they just uh, don't render it. But if you ask ChatGPT to browse an article and then tell you the full text of the article, even if it's behind a paywall, it often would work. So they don't outright say that, but that's what people on Twitter are saying the problem is. Um, and they also allude to it when they say, if a user specifically asks for a URL's full text, it might inadvertently fulfill this request. So what this means is, right now, <laughs> everything in this section is currently disabled. And hopefully it's temporary because there's some pretty cool things in there. Uh, and I really enjoyed making this section. And I can only, I I'm pretty positive they're going to bring this back in some way because it really expands the possibilities of what ChatGPT can do if it's connected to the web. Right? It can tell me stock prices. It can read articles and summarize them to me. Uh, it, it can do all sorts of things that it normally can't do. I mean, it can tell me about the current features in React that it doesn't know about because they were released after its training cutoff. So hopefully it's temporary. They say it's temporary. We'll see what happens. Next up, we're going to talk about web browsing with ChatGPT. Now, heads up here that this is a paid feature. It is not currently, at least, available to the free users. You have to pay for ChatGPT Plus in order to be able to use the web browsing and plugins features. So as we've discussed so far, uh, ChatGPT, well, GPT-4 had a training cutoff of some, what, September 2021, sometime in 2021, and it doesn't know about, it wasn't trained on any more recent information. So if I try to ask simple questions like, you know, who has the number one song on the Billboard chart, or even just what is the number one song right now? It's going to tell me, I'm sorry, I can't tell you that I have a knowledge cutoff of September 2021. No surprise there. Now, this would be very simple to just Google, which is a whole separate conversation we'll have because a lot of the prompts that you'll see online, people talking about how to use ChatGPT with web browsing, a lot of them are just stupid because you could just Google the answer way faster. You'll find that ChatGPT with the web can be slow. But the first step here is actually to enable the web browsing tools. Um, if you have paid for ChatGPT Plus, you'll have GPT-4 as an option. And I've enabled a couple of different things where if you can see I hover, I have three choices. The default GPT-4, browse with Bing, which is web browsing. They just actually renamed that. It used to say web browsing. Now it's branded for Bing. And then plugins. If you don't see those, but you do pay for ChatGPT Plus, go to settings and under settings, there's a beta features. And here there may be more features one day, but the two features you can turn on and off are browse with Bing. That's the web browsing version and plugins. And we'll talk more about plugins in a little bit. So this is the one for web browsing. Again, you won't see this if you don't pay for chat GPT plus as of right now, that definitely could change. The next thing you have to know is that it's not enough just to have that enabled. You then have to select it when you're creating a new chat. So I have that little icon up there of the web that tells me that I'm using the web browsing version, not the default, but the web browsing version. So now I can try the same thing. What is the number one song on the billboard charts right now? Now we wait. It tends to take a little while. It's not particularly quick because what it's doing is making a request it's loading that data and then it's reading or parsing it and then passing that off to the model. And here we go. The number one song in the Billboard Hot 100 chart right now is Last Night by Morgan Wallen. So this is just proof that it works. And I did verify that is the, the number one song right now. Not my favorite song personally, but it is the true number one song. It is accurate. So that's how we can use web browsing. Now I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos some examples of how it could be useful. Some example prompts that are better than, you know, something like this that I could easily Google. Okay, 
So now let's take a look at some other examples of web browsing, maybe something that can't be answered with a single Google search. So I'm going to try uh, something involving the stock market. I'll say, what three stocks uh, gained the most value today? And let's see what it does. You'll see that it's going to make an initial sort of search, top gaining stocks, May 24, 2023. It's going to click on a link. And then we wait while it loads the content and reads the content. Okay, so it finished there. Interesting, this is the one I was looking for. NVIDIA today had a, a huge jump in its price. Uh, AMD, uh, again, I can verify if this is accurate. I don't know right now, but I will verify and double check before I actually share this with you. Uh, same thing with this answer here. Now that was actually a pretty easy one. It looks like it found a single web page that just said top gaining stocks. So let's try something a little more interesting or a little more challenging. What about something like summarizing three news stories? So provide me or generate me summaries of today's top three news stories. And uh, in the real world, I would be way more specific. Are these US news, world news, uh, more output constraints? So maybe I'll say short summaries. Okay, so now it's going to do a search for something top news stories and it may just find all of them at once let's see if it does it clicked on one link it's reading the content okay it got all three at the same time ron DeSantis enters the presidential race debt ceiling negotiations not going well and anniversary of a mass shooting not the most uh, pleasant news so let's try something significantly more complicated I'm on the Hacker News Jobs Board. These are all Y Combinator startups, and these are recent job posts. What I want ChatGPT to do is, let's just make it easy by picking the first five, maybe, because it, it's slow if I tried to do it with every single one of these. I wanted to take the first five of these links, find the name of the company, so Aviator, Give Campus, Tesorio, Optory, Emerge Tools, and then find out how much money each of them has raised, and then compile that for me in uh, a table format maybe. So what I need to do is just provide this URL. I could probably just say, go to the Hacker News Jobs Board, but just to be very specific, I will say, visit or browse the Hacker News, let's make this a bit larger, job board here. And then I'll say, extract the names of the first five companies who have posted on the board for each of the companies find out how much money they have raised and then maybe uh, return or output the data as a markdown table let's try this so while this is going it will take a while the next thing I want to call your attention to is that we can click here to view exactly what it's doing. So it went to this link and you can click this link, you know, make sure it's the right one. And it is the jobs board. And then it's reading the content. Now it's doing a search. We can see specifically for aviator funding. And then hopefully it's reading a post or some content. It found the amount. Now it's doing the same thing for give campus funding which is the second company on here, right? Aviator, Give Campus, Tesorio is the next one. And I'll be back when this finishes, but you can tell exactly what it's doing, or at least a, a general idea of what it's clicking on, what it's searching for. And here we go. So it's generating me this table, exactly what I asked for. It's pretty cool. And I don't know if it's entirely accurate. I did double check these first three. As far as I could tell, looking on Crunchbase, these numbers are accurate. Uh, for the sake of time, I didn't bother with these others. That is the limitation here is that it's searching the web, but it's only you know looking for the first matching result or hopefully the best matching result. It's unclear actually exactly what algorithm it uses when it searches for aviator funding. I assume we can click this link. I assume it just clicks the, well, the first non-advertisement link. So somewhere down here, or maybe it just grabs this number here. I don't know exactly what it does and how it decides once a search has been uh, executed. Either way, 
it's giving us numbers that are relatively accurate. As far as I can tell, these are the right numbers that I can find on the internet. That doesn't mean they're the true numbers, but they're the public numbers. So that's an example of something that took way more than just a single search. It visited a page, uh, a job board, it extracted the company names, and you know what might have been nice is actually to then have it also include if I was doing this for real, you know, do it for every link on this page, include the funding, maybe the employee count, if I'm curious about that, and then a link to the specific job. And then I could have all that data here com sort of compiled to make it easy for me to look at different companies. And maybe I want to work at companies that are new and don't have a ton of funding or a low employee count. So just kind of a fun example that shows that it is capable of far more complex things than just a single Bing search. With that said, there are limitations. As amazing as the web browsing can be when it works, it also is quite buggy currently and runs into a lot of issues. So here's an example uh, of a prompt. I asked it to summarize key findings of three recent articles on the journal Nature. Give its answer in Markdown. So it made its way to nature.com. It started reading some content, then it went back, and then it just started clicking on a whole bunch of different pages, and sometimes the click fails. Sometimes it goes back, it, it gets very uh, confused or it ends up in a rabbit hole where it clicks on a login button where it didn't need to do that. If we go to the original link right here, it could easily, in a perfect world, have clicked these three top links, right? Inverted <laughs> per perovskite solar cells, author correction, author correction. Here's an example of one, right? It could just take this abstract and use that. Instead, it sometimes just kind of panics or gets in a loop, and you'll see that this took uh, probably a minute or more, and it actually ran out of time. So it time boxes itself, and it says, I ran out of time to find a third. Here are the summaries for the first two. It basically times out. And it did summarize that first article, and here's another article that it summarized. And it tells me that it can continue searching to find a third one, but there's no way to easily have it do that. Once I click regenerate, it kind of resumes. Oh, and reading content failed. So the point of this video is to show you that it is not perfect. And it helps at times if you open up this trail, this drop down menu, to see where it's getting stuck. So for some reason, right, it keeps going back, and then it's clicking on this link, and then it can't read the content somehow it ends up here. It's just kind of going all over the place. So it's not perfect uh, and you need to watch it and what it's doing at times to understand why it's failing. One important thing to be aware of when using web browsing with uh, ChatGPT is that it has a time limit for how long it will take on any given request. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's not always consistent. It's around one minute of time. Sometimes it will go a little longer. Sometimes it cuts off before one minute. This means that we can't ask it to do monumental tasks like summarize every article on Wikipedia. Even if it could browse every article and theoretically summarize each one individually, ignoring the whole context window and <laughs> maximum number of tokens, there's also the time limit problem. So uh, we've already run up against this once, but let me demonstrate this. Let's say I want I wanted to browse two of my favorite music blogs. I don't have time to read music blogs anymore. Sadly, that's a little bit true. And I want it to tell me about five articles from each, summarize five articles. So visit the following music blog websites and generate a summary hmm, for five different articles from each website. And why don't we get fancy with the output? We'll say your output should be in markdown format. And then I'll specify the blogs, Pitchfork and Stereo Gum. So just two music websites. You can put whatever, you know, a subreddit in here or different Wikipedia pages or any blog that you read. And it will start. And I will start a timer here. So if we look at what it's done, it's gone to Pitchfork, it clicked on one article, a new Taylor Swift song, and it's presumably summarizing that. Then it went back, it clicked on another article. Oh no, here we go. Uh-oh, now it looks like it got stuck in a loop. This sometimes happens. Reading content failed, so this is eating up more of our precious time. Okay, it's thinking, going back, trying again. Oh, that's not good.
and it's trying again. Okay, so now it found another article. It's summarizing that one. And it just gave me an output <laughs> that wasn't exactly what I asked for. I've completed summaries for four articles from Pitchfork. We've now hit a minute. And I have a feeling that's why it decided just to cut it short and give me the answer or give me some output. And then it turns red <laughs> when it finishes because uh, it didn't quite finish. And I guess it acknowledges that it didn't finish my request. I'm sorry I wasn't able to find the fifth. I'll now proceed to stereo gum. Nope, you won't because it's done. And I can ask it to regenerate, which I'll do. Although I actually am going to tweak my prompt a little bit to tell it uh, that I want it to give me a much shorter summary for each. Let's say something like each summary should be no longer than 50 words. So I'm gonna try this again and I'll just edit this out, but I'm gonna time it and see what happens this time. All right, so it's going, started a timer. So this time we hit a minute and 10 seconds and then it just decided it was done and it starts the output. And this time it explicitly tells us, unfortunately I ran out of time to find a fifth article from Pitchfork, let alone visit your second blog, Stereo Gum. So just more evidence that there is a time limit, although it is not hard coded at one minute, as far as I can tell, it's somewhere in that range. It's important to keep that in mind when you're writing prompts uh, with the web browsing model.